In this lecture, we will introduce reverse engineering malware using JDRA. So by using JDRA, you will be able to analyze executable binary files containing malicious code. This section is a great opportunity to put into practice the knowledge acquired during the first sections of our course. And to put this knowledge into practice, we will analyze the uh, point of sale POS malware. So this malware basically scrapes the RAM memory of point of sale systems to steal credit card and debit card information. So here we will first search about the point of sale malwares. Let's open the Google Chrome here and point of sale malware. And as you can see here, POS malware is a type of malicious software designed to steal a customer's personal information through the point of sale devices, post devices. Let's see what post device is. And here, this is the post device here. So this malware is designed for this post devices. So here I have two files. In the first file, we have the malware and S ys file which you will learn what this is used for and after that we have the password for this zip file so before installing this malware before you actually you need to run this malware on sandbox or virtual machine because um, it might infect your main machine here so firstly turn off the real-time protection so this is a executable windows malware and here our approach will start by setting a safe analysis environment of course and then we will look for malware indicators in the malware sample and finally we will conclude by performing in-depth malware analysis using jidra so here uh, for technical requirements um, you will need to have the virtual machine uh, like vir virtual box here in previous lectures you learned how to install the virtual machines into your operating system and also you will need to download the samples which is attached to lecture section here uh, and at the time of uh, creating this course the public version of jitra has no debugging support for nav uh, so this limits the scope of jitra to static analysis meaning files are analyzed without being executed so but of course jitra static analysis can complement the dynamic analysis performed by any existing debugger of your choice such as x64 dbg windbg and only dbg so both types of analysis can be performed in parallel so setting up an environment for malware analysis is a broad topic so we will cover the basics of jitra for this pur purposes and keep in mind that the golden rule uh, when setting up a malware analysis environment is, is to isolate it from your computer and network even if you are performing static analysis it is recommended to set up an isolated environment because you have no guarantee that malware won't exploit some jitter vulnerability and get executed anyway because here user also has some vulnerabilities um, it should be like cva 2019 17 664 and here uh, this is a gdra malware so cva 2019 17 664 is uh, when executing jitter from a given path the java process working directory is set to this path so then when launching the python interpreter via the jitter code browser window of python uh, jitter will try to execute that cmd.exe program from this working directory here so as you can see here the base store score is high here and in order to analyze malware you can use physical computer uh, restorable to a clean state via hard disk drive backups or a virtual one here so the first option is more realistic but slower when restoring the backup and more expensive here so 
you can also isolate your network. Um, this is a good example uh, to illustrate where risk is, is ransomware encrypting the shared folders during analysis. So you can also use the virtual box or VMware for your vir creating virtual machine purposes. And now let's look into our malwares here. So as you probably remember from previous lectures, Jitter works with projects containing zero or more files. So this here, uh, this malware consists of two components. So actually let's call this the Alina malware because in reality actually this malware called by the internet community is Alina here, the code name. So, Alina malware here consists two components. Can you see the screen? Yes, perfect. So, Alina malware here contains consists of two components. A Windows driver, rt.sys, and a portable executable, spark.exe. So, there are uh, a compressed jitter project like this here malware sample 1.zip containing both components can be found in the lecture attachment section. So if you want to get the Alina malware sample as is instead of Jitter project, you can also find it in um, the lecture attachment sections here. And uh, because we also compressed and protected with the password infected we also have this file so the password is infected and it's quite common to share malware in this way so that it does not accidentally get infected and next we will try to quickly guess what kind of malware we are dealing with in general terms and to do that we will look for strings which can be revealing in many cases so we will also check external sources which can be useful if the malware has been analyzed or classified so finally we will analyze its capabilities by looking for dynamic linking library dll functions so here dll functions and we have the sys and exa here so now what we're gonna do is we will start the jitter here the new project And after that, we will start analysis in next lecture. I'm waiting you in next lecture.